Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining us today with Everyday Seminar. Before we move on to today's topic, let's go through the solution to last week's problem. Okay, uh, last week's problem, this was the question. Indeterminate forms or undefined occur when substitution in the limit results in zero over zero. Okay. In such cases, either factorize or factor or rationalize the expressions. So this was a question last week. Now what we have here, the first thing, if you um, insert negative 5 directly here and here, you'll get 0 over 0. And if you put that in your calculator, you'll get a undefined, right? That's what they call that. So what we do here is we factorize x squared take away 25. The perfect square, uh, most of you should know, x squared take away 25 is equal to x minus 5 multiplied by x plus 5. So when we have it in this form, what we can do is we can cancel that x plus 5 here, x plus 5 on the top in the numerator, that becomes 1. Therefore, we have 1 over x minus 5. So in, um, when we get to this stage, what we can do is we can substitute directly and we get 1 over negative 5 take away 5 which is negative 10 therefore the answer is 1 over negative 10 the limit of the equation as x approaches to negative 5 is 1 over negative 10 okay let's move on so today's topic um, under the main branch of calculus is differentiation also known as differential calculus and today we'll be going through some key formulas. Our key terms for today, differentiation, function, factorize, instantaneous rate of change, a slope, optimal solution, derivative, and the power or exponent. Introduction, where does differentiation fit in? Calculus is built on two main ideas both of which rely heavily on the concept of limits. Okay, we did that a few weeks ago. The first is differential calculus or differentiation, which is concerned with the instantaneous rate of change of quantities with respect to other quantities. Uh, this can be illustrated by the slope of a function's graph. Uh, the other key topic under calculus is integral calculus or integration which studies accumulation of quantities such as areas under curves, linear distance traveled or volume displaced. These two processes act inversely to each other as shown by the fundamental theorem of calculus. So later on in this series we'll be covering integration and uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So differentiation also helps us with finding the optimal solution. Okay, that's basically what calculus is all about. So it helps us find the opti optimal solution to a problem that can be given in mathematical form. So again, differentiation, sometimes called differential calculus, is simply the process of finding the derivative. Okay, remember that word? Which is a measure of how a function changes as its input changes. In other words, a derivative can be thought of as how much one quantity is changing in response to changes in some other quantity. For example, the derivative of the position of a moving object with respect to time is the object's instantaneous velocity. So uh, some of you who may be familiar with differentiation are used to seeing a uh, curve. Okay, and what we do in differentiation is basically find the gradient. Remember m or the slope. Okay, notice how on this curve, the slope changes. It's going up, up here when it's green. Then it comes flat and then goes down. Okay, a negative gradient. There are two ways to write differential functions. Um, the following, notice the following function, y equals x squared. So Leibniz notation, we write dy over dx is equal to 2x. Or the other way we can write it is in Lagrange's notation. F dash x is equal to 2x. Okay, more on that later. Let's move on. So this brings us to our first principle, the derivative formula. Uh, in differentiation or differential calculus, it's all about finding the derivative. So we have this formula here. Please don't forget this. 
um, a function of x plus h minus the function of x over h. Seems simple. What you have to remember here is that you need to be able to cancel out h in the numerator and the denominator. Let me give you an example. So just before we give you your example, let's look at the formula again. So that formula is called the derivative of f at a. So we write the derivative of f with respect to x is, there are many ways to write that, um, as we mentioned before, f dash or dy over dx. So that brings us to f dash x or f prime x or the derivative of f with respect to x, y dash or y prime, dy dx or the derivative of y with respect to x, df dx or the der derivative of y with respect to x, and then we have d dx of f of x or the derivative of f of x or simply d dx of f of x. Quite complicated, huh? And so it brings us to, so here's our example using uh, the derivative formula. We have a function x squared plus 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative. So we put those terms there into the formula, the rule, the derivative formula. So that brings us to, we put the x plus h, we add that h there. And that's the x squared, we square this, then we plus 1, from brackets here, minus x, the term, we take the whole term x squared plus 1. And that brings us to, uh, we expand that, x plus h times x plus h is x squared plus 2hx plus h squared plus 1 minus x squared, sorry, um, minus 1. Now what we can do here, we're going to simplify this, uh, plus 1 minus 1, x squared minus x squared. That brings us to 2hx plus h squared. Remember we mentioned earlier that we need to find a way to cancel the h in the numerator and the h in the denominator. So that can become h2x plus h over h, cancel the h's, then we get 2x plus h. Now when we're up to this part, what we can do is simply substitute the 0 into here, which becomes 2x plus 0, so we get 2x. Therefore, the derivative of that function there, x squared plus 1, is equal to 2x. Simple as that. The power rule. From the method of the first principle, the derivative formula, we find a similar shortcut tool for finding the derivative using the power rule. So the power rule comes into effect for differentiation um, for one variable equations, which are in the form of including a constant, a, a variable x, and an exponent n. Okay, so simply to find the derivative, F dash, the power rule states that for ax to the power of n, we take the uh, exponent minus 1 and we put that value, we multiply it by the variable and the, the constant. Okay, a simple example would be what should we do? Uh, x3. So what we do is we, that'll be your n here, or oh, let's make it. 2x3. 2 will be your a, x is your x variable, and 3 is your n. So n minus 1, that becomes f dash, let's say that's fx, f dash will be x, n minus 1, 3 minus 1 is 2. We take n, put it over here, so 3 will come here, and we multiply it by the constant here, 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, 6x squared. The derivative of 2x cubed is 6x squared. More on that soon. Let's move on. Um, here's another example, a harder example for the power rule. Since it is possible to actually split up different terms during differentiation, we can use this to differentiate the below equation in the following fashion. So 
a function of x, 5 over 4, x to the power of 4, minus 3 over 2, x to the power of 3, plus 8 over 7, x squared, or x to the power of 2, plus 2 over 3, uh, x to the power of 1, or x, minus 1 over 7. So, f prime, f dash, or the derivative of that function, here's the law again, a and x, n minus 1. So we're going to take away 1 from here, that becomes 3, okay, 4 take away 1 is 3. And then we're going to take the 4 and multiply it by the constant. Now this is done for every term, that's uh, 1, here's another term here, another one here, another one here, and one here. So that, we'll take away 1, put that over there, take away 1 here, take that 3, multiply it by 3 over 2, and so forth. Now there's another rule, uh, very simple. Notice that this term over here, this is a constant rule. It doesn't have a variable, there's no x, okay? No x here. If there's no x, this cancels out and becomes 0. It's known as a constant rule. Moving on, so we do that for each, and then after we multiply 4 times 5, that 4 cancels out, that's 5x, uh, 5x to the power of 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 over 2, 3 take away 1 is 2, minus 9 over 2x squared, and so forth. Notice that that becomes 0 over here, the constant rule, 0 times anything equals 0. Remember that x to the power of 0 is equal to 1, so that value becomes that becomes multiplied by 1, which stays at 2 over 3. And that's our final answer right here. The derivative of this function is 5x to the power of 3 minus 9 over 2x squared plus 16 over 7x plus 2 over 3. Um, let's have a look at something. All we did here, we move that 4 there, multiply by that, and notice that when the the power of x was 1, all we did was make that equal to 1. That became 2 over 3, and the constants become 0. Okay? Okay, let's move on. So that was the first part of uh, differentiation. Next week we'll be going, we'll be dealing with things like graphs and slopes. Um, thank you for viewing today's lecture. Before we leave today's quiz, Determine f prime when the function of x is x to the power of 3 plus 2. So we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today with Everyday Seminar. Have a good day.